So, hello everyone and uh, hello our Italian partners and friends. Uh, hello Ukrainian, TISOL Ukraine members. Hello Maria Grazia, hello Lisa, hello all the people who are supporting us uh, in these dark times. Uh, and today uh, we're having the eighth uh, webinar of uh, this joint initiative uh, of uh, TISOL Italy and TISOL Ukraine. And uh, right now I uh, would like to remind you that we will have one more webinar and uh, this webinar will be scheduled uh, on next Tuesday, uh, the 31st of May. Uh, and uh, that will be an Italian webinar. And only after that, uh, we'll talk about the certificates. Uh, uh, because uh, the certificates will be uh, so sent to the people who participated uh, and uh, uh, the list of people will be on our website. So uh, today here we are having the webinar that uh, features uh, uh, the bigger part of TESOL Ukraine board. Uh, it's uh, Olena Ilyanka, our TESOL Ukraine president uh, is Lilia Kuznetsova, TESOL Ukraine treasurer, and it's me, Marina Tsikhalska, who is uh, the vice president. And now please let me briefly introduce uh, Olena and Lily, and then Olena will introduce me. So Olena Ilyenka is the doctor of science, uh, and she holds degrees in philology and in pedagogy. She's the head of the Department of Foreign Languages of Bigetov National University of Urban Economy in Kharkiv, Ukraine. And she's still in Kharkiv. This is the biggest wonder because uh, during this war, she has never left Kharkiv. She stays there. She contacts with her colleagues uh, and uh, she also supports all of us, uh, TESOL Ukraine members. Uh, because uh, Elena not only has 30 years of experience, uh, but uh, she was um, a TESOL Ukraine member since its foundation in 1995. So Elena is uh, one of uh, the most experienced members uh, and uh, she is the pillar of uh, our organization. Uh, we all love her. It's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, another pillar is uh, Lilia Kuznetsova. Uh, Lilia holds PhD in philology. She is an associate professor of the foreign language department uh, for humanities uh, in Lviv National University, named after Ivan Franco. She has uh, lots of years of experience uh, in ESP, teaching English, uh, in translation, and uh, she also a co-author of textbooks uh, and many teaching materials. Uh, so Lilia is also in this organization since uh, its start uh, from 1995. Uh, and uh, all people who know Lilia know that she is not only a person who is uh, well knowledge in uh, different spheres, uh, but uh, she is a great treasurer of our organization uh, who keeps the money, who uh, helps in the projects uh, and uh, who is uh, a support uh, in every event uh, that uh, we have. Uh, thank you, Marina. And uh, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, another speaker of our today's the presentation is uh, vice president of uh, TISO Ukraine and another pillar of uh, our association. Uh, Marina Tsigenska uh, has a PhD in philology. Uh, she is associate professor in the English language and methodology department uh, of Krivi. Uh, State Pedagogical University. Uh, she is uh, in course of numerous scientific articles and textbooks. 
uh, and a member of many research programs and exchange uh, programs. Marina Tigelska is also greatly interested in methods of teaching a new generation of students, which she introduces and tests in the educational uh, center in the class, uh, where she is an owner and uh, director of studies. Uh, so if you uh, are not against, I will start our uh, today's talk. And today, uh, Marina, Lilia, and me uh, will talk about the system of uh, continuing professional development of English language teachers uh, for both groups, uh, secondary school uh, teachers and universities in Ukraine as well as activities of TESOL Ukraine in this direction. Uh, so, uh, Marina, please show uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. number one, slide number two, please, Zena. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, thank you. Uh, so, as you can see... I, I don't know what's going on. Just give me a second. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. It is jumping. Yeah, it's jumping, but just give me a second. I will close the demonstration. And, okay. Uh, um, I think uh, I can describe it without the picture now. Uh, so uh, an important element uh, of our mission, the mission of TESO Ukraine, is developing uh, the system of teacher training uh, network with the professionals in Ukraine and worldwide and promote new ideas, new methods in teaching English. Uh, since the year of 1995, uh, this is the year of the organization uh, foundation, uh, we have had uh, we have uh, systematically carried our professional development uh, of EFL teachers in the form of winter, summer schools, uh, trainings, webinars, uh, series of seminars, and so on. Uh, so uh, now I believe uh, we can account uh, for more than 50 teacher training uh, institutes uh, and uh, other events. Uh, and this figure indicates uh, that the association has uh, some experience uh, in this type of activities. Uh, so the next, uh, the, uh, uh, speaking about the system of continuing professional development in Ukraine, I would like to tell you that uh, we are extremely interested uh, to know how the system of continuing uh, professional development is designed in uh, Italy. Uh, and uh, we would be, it will be great to know uh, whether you have any requirements for the frequency and duration of trainings. Uh, for secondary school and uh, university teachers. Uh, so we hope uh, after the presentation, uh, we the information about you uh, and uh, about the principles of training uh, organization. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so Speaking uh, about the system of continuing professional development in Ukraine, uh, uh, we should mention that before the year 2018, Ukraine uh, had a requirement for a teacher of secondary school and uh, university educator to undergo a complex professional training once in five so the complex training uh, included a comprehensive study of modern research in the methodology and teaching all four skills, uh, as well as some aspects of intercultural communication. Uh, 
the training was designed for 180 hours, it means six credits, and conducted by special state centers uh, for continuing professional development. But since uh, the year 2018, uh, due to the introduction of international standards in the sphere of teaching English, a new system of continuing professional development of teachers uh, was introduced, uh, which involves completing one professional training on a topic that interests their trainee once a year. Uh, this training is designed for uh, 30 hours, one credit, uh, every year. Uh, is it a good change? We consider this change very positive because in today's uh, rapidly changing world, uh, as you know, every few years, new approaches and methods appear and uh, uh, they can help uh, dramatically uh, to improve our teaching style. Uh, so the next, please, Marina, the next slide. Uh -huh. and, yes, yes, I'm trying. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. And we will speak about the positive aspects, uh, maybe just highlight some things, uh, uh, of the new system, which we uh, consider to be positive. Uh, uh, we uh, think that uh, this new uh, system allows uh, a teacher to be at the cutting edge of modern research and methodology development, uh, to have a more nuanced understanding of the area studied as uh, we have more hours uh, for studying uh, a certain area uh, in methodology of English language teaching. Uh, to get an opportunity to be trained by high quality professionals, uh, experts in uh, their fields. Uh, and uh, it also brings us an opportunity uh, to work at individual pace uh, when uh, you are uh, mastering this course, this training. Uh, as you see in such systems, responsibility is shifted to a teacher, uh, to uh, a trainee as it may be focused on the professional and personal interest of this trainee. So the approach is really a trainee-centered approach. And the system combines uh, to uh, the most um, well-known maybe approaches to uh, teacher development, they are autonomous approach and external approach. Uh, autonomous approach uh, means that the teacher can choose the training uh, for themselves, uh, which is uh, useful, which is trendy. And external approach means that uh, teachers have an opportunity to attend professional events. Uh, in the course of their development, professional development. Uh, so this uh, slide presents uh, the list uh, of uh, teacher development institutes uh, that have held since the year 2019. As you see, uh, TESOL Ukraine uh, has held training uh, on four cross-curriculum, uh, alliance, media literacy, uh, CLIO and EMI, as well as teaching new generations, uh, Z and Alpha. And uh, Marina and Lilia will give today a more detailed description of our latest training, uh, 
so who are usually the initiators of the uh, topics uh, of choosing the topic for our tra uh, trainings uh, the trainees uh, have initiated some of the topics for the trainings but uh, some of them uh, are based on uh, Erasmus plus project um, in which uh, the association is currently participated uh, but, uh, and uh, participating and this project is uh, foreign language teacher training capacity development as a way to Ukraine's multilingual education and European integration. The uh, findings, uh, our findings uh, uh, have been put into the uh, series of webinars uh, on uh, EMI uh, and CLIO. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I am, uh, that's all for my part. And now Lilia will continue our presentation. Please. Uh, thank you very much, Liana. So uh, we have stopped uh, uh, on our teacher development institutes. You have seen several of them on the previous slide. And we would like to talk today about the last one uh, project. It is teaching new generations, teaching generation that and alpha. And uh, this topic uh, is very updated. Uh, we have uh, some uh, teacher institute where we discussed uh, different topics which should be um, developed for our teachers, which are very interesting. And we stopped on, on this project. Why? Uh, because uh, uh, now six generations are live on our planet and three generations are still working. Uh, these generations are generations baby boomers who appreciate the atmosphere of stability and sense of need. Generation X value the development of learning, pay more attention to work, then families focus on individual success. Generation Y communicate, appreciate a free atmosphere, willing to cooperate and at the same time strive for quick results. So we uh, try, uh, why we try this topic? You see three generations. Each generation has its own characteristics, its own values, and certainly its own approaches for education. And uh, you can't educate people from other generation not knowing their characteristics and values. So we decide uh, to, take at the, bake, at the base of the background, the work of well-known American scientist Nielsen Hole and William Strauss, the generation theory. This theory is based on the assertion that the history of social processes is cyclical and repeats every 80, 90 years. During this time, society goes through four stages, rise, the society is dominated by the desire to group and unite. Awaking, dominated by the desire for autonomy and individuality. Decline, prosperity of individualism and crisis, destruction of old social institutions and the emergence of new ones. So the generation theory first singled out generation Z, 1995, 2012, and named it main characteristics. And we try to go through these characteristics and on the base of these characteristics, build a practical approach of uh, future education of our future uh, lectures for this new generation. So the generation of students uh, born after uh, 1997, is the first fully digital generation. They are called generation that digital people or digital natives because they are interconnected through social networks, internet, YouTube, mobile phones, etc. Their values are still in the process formation, but psychologists note the tendency 
to individualism, self-confidence, and focuses on successes. So the information environment in which generation that lives has a significant impact on the development of their personality, determining their characteristics. And I would like you to get acquainted with these characteristics of this new generation. So the first one is impatience. Impatience is very character for this generation. In growing up in an online environment and accustomed to the fact that their wishes will always be fulfilled in virtual reality. So they are not patient. They want to get results at once. But in real life, all of us know that it is not enough just to press the button. So we are going to take into consideration that they are impatient and we are going to make these tasks very short. So the second characteristic is that we are going to focus on the shared and the short term goals. So if you take the topic, which is very long and full of material, they will be bored. They won't, they won't have desire to learn the topic. So for them easier, it will be to divide this topic and to put short term goals. And then after that, Having success in one short goal, they move to another and they will then achieve results which we teachers and lectures would like them to achieve. The next one characterization is their addiction to the internet. We all know that all day we are sitting in the social internet. So new generation, they live in this on this internet playing online games constantly talking about their lives in blogs and communicating in context, Skype, Zoom, and so on. So uh, we should take in consideration uh, this one, this characteristic, and then somehow shift our learning process using all of these new technical devices and networks. We must remember about one more new feature of this generation. They are not brought up on books, and therefore, maximum they can read any articles. More even, they uh, often they use uh, they are used to read mini news in the format of tweets and statutes on social networks. So, if you give them to read a long, long book, one hundred pages, it will be boring for them. They can't do this. Unfortunately, maybe because our generations like reading a lot of materials. So that's why we need to give them tasks, short texts, uh, which can be, uh, with, with which they can work and then maybe uh, make them able to enlarge the size of the, of the text or these texts, but step by step. Uh, all of them now are very independent and they would like uh, to earn money very, very early. Yes, it is not during our generations when we live with the support of our parents. So they would be very successful. So we need to show them uh, that they could be successful and uh, to make um, them to be enthusiastic in their learning. So. Uh, Besides um, myself, I have two, uh, me, myself, I have two grandchildren, you know, that they are teenagers, so they half this generation, half another, and I see that they have so many arguments when they want to, to have something from me, and sometimes I don't know even what to do and to answer, so logical and persuasive they are. But from another uh, side, uh, they value honesty and they are very open in this social network from one side it's very good from for the other side you know that there are so many strangers in the social networks and maybe it is not very always good to be open so i think from this point of view we need to give them knowledge how to be on safe side in the when they are communicating in this social networks. Uh, so there are two opinions about communicating through the internet and through the personal communication. 
for our generations, we like to sit with a cup of coffee to go somewhere, to sit around the table and communicate, to feel each other, to see each other faces, eyes. For them, they were born with this uh, digital environment. And uh, what is characteristic for them that they, in the choice between a personal meeting and communication in cyberspace, they prefer the second method. So maybe uh, for me, for example, it was uh, not so easy to, sw to switch to their online distant education. But for this generation, they feel themselves very good sitting and looking at you and communicating through their uh, screen. Well, what I have would like to tell more that now the teacher is not in the middle of their, she is not the source of information. The information that is developed so quickly that sometimes our students know more than we. And that is the characteristic for this uh, generation too. So we must be on the safe side, not uh, to insist them to do something, to listen, to maybe our role is more to give them directions than to be as like uh, this in the center of all these process. Um, what I would like to uh, tell us one more thing that um, now the transfer of knowledge from word of mouth from teacher to student is hopelessly outdated. The same is uh, when we are talking um, about inheritance when parents share the experience uh, when they were the example to their children. Now everything is you can find in the internet and new generation prefer to communicate, to take knowledge from uh, this um, space. Uh, but uh, there are some, so this is the characteristics which we take into consideration when start um, develop the course, uh, how to educate, how to make education interesting for this new generation. I have told you that we, the values are on the stage of formation, uh, but I would like to point out one more value, one value, the main value is time for this generation. Time for this generation is the most valuable treasure and the ability to spend it effectively usually becomes the main argument for students. They are looking for the perfect balance between the time spent spend the amount on information process and the benefits then they can derive from this information. If the time it spent is too much, students will either refuse to study the material of a certain course at all, or will look for information elsewhere because there's always not enough time. If the research information is needed, but poorly structured, if it takes a long time to master, students will look for it in other sources. Unfortunately, some educators see this as a reluctancy to study well. But we must remember that generation, digital generation, is not able to hold attention for more than 15, 20 minutes. Therefore, it is necessary to divide the study time into intervals of 25, 30 minutes. In this way, the type of student activity will change and they will not get tired. And me, myself, I won't be, be boring for you, and I don't want you to be bored with all these theoretical points. And I'll give the floor to Marina, will show some practical implementation of ideas of how to learn the new generation. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, I... Uh, mm, I will talk about the training. I will tell you how we started, but also I will lead you through the series of techniques that are really good for using it when you work with kids, when you work with post millennials. But first of all, let's start with the training. So as uh, you've understood, uh, 
we had to um, develop this topic uh, during the whole year. We would start with uh, the uh, Ukrainian version uh, because the first training was in Ukrainian and this training had to, to be completed. It had to end on the 24th of February, which of course uh, didn't happen. And uh, here I uh, put uh, the screenshots uh, of uh, our uh, Viber group uh, where, uh, you know, so the first, this first, uh, uh, not first, but it starts with my message that tomorrow we'll have uh, Zoom and next day uh, uh, there is uh, no Zoom already because there is uh, there won't be any people from Kharkiv. Uh, and then there were so many things. Uh, people were given advice on how to behave. Uh, other people like Lyubov Navrotska, she's here, she gave the contacts of people who would uh, host you when you are in Khmelnytsky. And uh, after this two very, very difficult months, uh, uh, we finally decided to uh, complete uh, the training. So the training was completed on the 28th uh, of uh, April, like two months later. And uh, unfortunately, if uh, in the first, uh, like at the very beginning, we had 40 participants, uh, so only 10 of them uh, were able to participate uh, in the last session uh, and only 10 of them got the certificates. Uh, but hopefully, we do hope uh, that the rest uh, will show up uh, and uh, present their projects. Uh, but most of all, we hope that uh, they are safe and uh, that uh, they uh, will get back to us. So uh, about the training, uh, how uh, Lena has told uh, that uh, I uh, own language schools uh, and I'm greatly interested in uh, how to teach uh, a new generation, how to teach the kids uh, who don't want to be taught uh, the way uh, we used to teach them. And uh, uh, I am uh, so greatly interested uh, in building maps, but uh, these maps, uh, we don't call them uh, mind maps uh, because they have uh, a certain system. They are more based on categories uh, and uh, on the connections. So, and uh, that was the map uh, that I built uh, for the training. And in this map, uh, you will see the categories. Like, remember Lila said that uh, all information has to be uh, presented in very, very short bits uh, because the attention span of the students uh, is limited. Uh, today, uh, scientists say that uh, the attention span of uh, a student is smaller than the attention span of a goldfish. Uh, so it doesn't mean that uh, they don't concentrate a lot, uh, but it means that we have to be really quick in presenting the information. So. First of all, uh, we uh, look at the map and uh, we try to find out uh, the main points. We try to find out uh, the main categories uh, and uh, how everything is scheduled here. So now I give you one second uh, and uh, could you please uh, tell me what are the categories uh, that you can find in this map. Mm -hmm. I hope you can see it well, yeah? So come on, what are the main categories? They the, are. The, 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 this, perhaps the three basic are, uh, two of them refer to the actors, uh, that is the performers, uh, the uh, students and teachers or learners and teachers, and the instruments uh, that connect them. 
All the rest just are subcategories that are developed based on these three. That's what I think. Yeah, thank you so much, Lyudmila. Yeah? So you see that uh, there are like two big categories, teachers and students. Huh? We can talk about uh, students and characterize them. And we can even explain why they are so different from us, because they were influenced by computer devices. And as a result, uh, each step of this influence, uh, it has changed the nature of a student. For example, computer devices provide information on all topics. So students don't need to remember anything by heart because they easily may find it, they may Google it. It is called the cross literacy when they easily find anything and they don't need to learn it by heart. So next, the information abundance and you can't read everything. So as a result, uh, students developed clip syncing. So computers and devices with internet connection provide short, catchy sentences to attract attention. So most of our students uh, started thinking in tweets. So, and uh, it's easier when we uh, bring information in tweets, in short phrases, uh, and then uh, make uh, this information, uh, like, and then enlarge the piece of the information uh, that uh, we need uh, to bring to our students. And finally, all texts have hyperlinks, uh, so students easily switch back and forth uh, from one topic to another, and uh, as I've already said, uh, they don't need to remember anything by heart. So how can we as teachers uh, use the uh, peculiarities of our students? Of course, uh, we need to develop the memory of our students. And we need to transform clip thinking into linear thinking. Also, uh, we need to base uh, all our teachers talk and the information we give to our students, we need to base on short pieces of information because the students think in tweets. And finally, we have to try to create a picture in our students' brains because these pictures, they are made of pieces of a puzzle. And uh, to have uh, the whole picture, to make uh, or to complete this puzzle, to make this big picture, we really need uh, to go back to the pieces all the time. And uh, we really need uh, to review, go back, uh, combine, use critical thinking, and many, many, many other things uh, to develop uh, our students as not clip thinkers, but linear thinkers, as people who think in big bits of information and who are able to process more than just a short tweet. So what have we done right now? We characterized, we characterized digital natives, and teachers. What else have we done? Uh, during, the, during the session, we could do it with uh, the participants. Yeah like, yeah, like the participants could uh, go to each of the point uh, and discuss this point. Yeah? So uh, Ludmila mentioned categorization, but uh, what other thinking operation was just used uh, when I talked. We categorized. Enter. Uh, visualized. Visualized for sure. Everything is visual. But when I said that they don't remember the course, uh, so as the result, uh, we need, uh, I talked about. Uh, 
cause and effect. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, we see that the maps that uh, our students uh, like need have to be based on the development of uh, thinking as well. And such map, it helps to develop uh, uh, the basic thinking. Uh, we can characterize, uh, we can categorize, uh, we can talk about cause and effect, uh, and uh, we can provide the solution with the help of this map. So, uh, Ludmila has already said, and once again, we used colors uh, for making everything visual, uh, mostly for making the categories visual. Yeah. So you see that uh, here the colors are used for the categories. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm, uh, after we used colors, uh, uh, we need to remember that all the information uh, that uh, we present to our students uh, has to go through the four phases of learning. So those people who uh, participated in my trainings know that this is my favorite topic. Uh, and uh, I remember that uh, it's impossible to learn uh, everything uh, at uh, presentation, practice, production, and that's it. Uh, like, uh, we need um, to compile the material into the map. And then uh, we need to go back to the map while uh, we're doing uh, all the exercises, tasks, activities, uh, because it helps to create the robust construction in our memory. And the four phases of learning are impressing, so right now I showed you the map and we went through the first stage. Uh, you got the impressing. So you got the main idea of the categories. Then uh, during our, like now I will talk about uh, the teacher development training, the teacher development institute. So now from session to session, we were going back to the map. And as we were discussing different points, we were uh, memorizing the main map. So, and uh, that's what happens. You, after the impression stage, you go to the memorization stage. So you try to remember as many details as possible. And uh, if uh, to talk about, like if to think of a metaphor, we may think of a metaphor of a new classroom. When you come into a new classroom, you will never remember any detail of the room. You will only remember how many windows it has, uh, how many doors uh, are there, and uh, not, not that much. Mm -hmm. But the more you stay, the more you teach in the room, uh, the more details uh, you will remember. The same happens uh, uh, with our students. The more they go back to the structure, the more details they will remember. So memorization stage is important, but unfortunately there will be a moment called authorization when our brain will get rid of unnecessary elements. Sometimes we wonder why not all students remember what we tell them, but in reality, it's just not for their brains. Like some brains can't grasp everything. So, and that will be the authorization stage. And finally, at the initiation stage, our students will be ready for tests and grades. So, it brings us to the ideas on how to teach the new generation. First, we chunk a topic and we place the teachable and learnable elements. Uh, we put them into one picture. Then uh, we go through memorization. We do activities, we just play games, uh, read texts, uh, but we still go back uh, to these chunks of the information uh, and we make them uh, bigger. 
like those chunks, they grow the more we learn about the topic. Unfortunately, at the serialization stage, some details uh, will never, will leave the student's brain. And finally, our students will learn it. So it means that um, any topic uh, may be structured uh, into these elements. Uh, and if we want to teach our students successfully, like the new generation, uh, will probably need to, to structure everything uh, into this meaningful maps, uh, which uh, have categories, uh, which have colors, uh, and uh, which provide our students uh, with the basic information on a topic. Yeah? So, and uh, also when we uh, had, uh, when we had uh, the training, we talked a lot about uh, how to structure a topic uh, and uh, just, uh -huh. At one moment, I just can't, uh, I can't get a new slide. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not yet. Uh -huh. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, and uh, at one, so we were, we were talking about uh, uh, how to structure the maps. Uh, and uh, we like we had the whole the whole training on this, uh, and um, uh, you see the main you see the main like uh, the main advice that I can give. Uh, do the categories uh, think about uh, the important categories uh, that uh, we need to know as language learners. Uh, for example, if there is a thing, uh, so it belongs to a group, uh, it consists of the elements, it has characteristics. Uh, so then we can talk about humans, society, history, climate, and weather. And uh, there are many topics uh, 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 which derive from one very simple topic. For example, if your students can talk about fruits and vegetables uh, when they're very young, they will probably have to remember the same fruits and vegetables uh, until they're able to talk about uh, the healthy living at the age of 16 or when they're teenagers. So I also advise to, to use symbols uh, the symbols I use are adjective, noun, verb, the noun and uh, adverb, but any symbols are good. You only have to be sustainable in using the symbols. Like uh, they have to be the same symbols all the time. Otherwise it will be difficult for your students to uh, recognize the symbols. And uh, finally, that was uh, our last, uh, that was our last uh, meeting. You see that the number of participants uh, was really limited, uh, but all of them presented uh, their projects. And uh, you can't imagine how proud I was uh, when uh, I, uh, saw the projects. And uh, for example, Jenia uh, uh, Novikova and her group, uh, so they uh, presented a project. Uh, so that was the project. That was what they created. Uh, it, look at the map and uh, it's amazing. Like it has categories. Uh, yeah? So the people are customers, purchasers, buyers, and shoppers, uh, and they are spenders. Mm -hmm. So they uh, spend, save, and pay money. And there was this big part uh, about money, uh, what type of money they can spend, save, or pay. Yeah? So then uh, they can... Uh, mm, they can spend this money on goods, uh, on food, drinks. So here is the category of goods. Um, they can spend money in different places uh, for services. Uh, and uh, they also can get money from 
the lenders. Uh, you can imagine that uh, this is a really good map for the students who study the topic of money and uh, who need to remember lots of vocabulary, uh, which is not that easy to remember. Eh? But by uh, going through the unit, uh, by doing different exercises, uh, by uh, doing different activities, uh, the teachers uh, can always go back to the map uh, and uh, ask the students uh, and ask the students to, uh, sorry, I have to admit people, uh, and ask the students uh, to. Uh, train their thinking skills because they can go deeper, they can talk about different foods, they can talk about different clothes, footwear, accessories, like here are big chunks of vocabulary you need to train. Yeah, so they can talk about this types of money and how this money, how you get this money. They can talk about uh, offers, discounts, bargains, and sales in the shops. Uh, and again, uh, uh, they can discuss it. But uh, in the end, uh, they uh, will, uh, um, or they will end up uh, with this vocabulary, which uh, will be compiled uh, and uh, which will make uh, this uh, robust construction in their brains. So the idea is that uh, uh, while you go through the unit uh, and you understand the peculiarities of uh, the generation, which uh, doesn't pay much attention, which thinks in tweets, uh, which uh, doesn't like big pieces of information, you go back to this uh, short bits of information and uh, step by step, uh, you make uh, this information, like uh, you develop this information, you make uh, this pieces of information bigger, bigger and bigger. And uh, that was uh, one map presented by the whole group, by the way, but unfortunately they were from Kharkiv uh, and that is why uh, yeah, so now they all are scattered all over the world. And uh, another map, uh, like all the maps were wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, another map was uh, more um, scientific. Uh, it's on uh, the translation techniques, uh, on uh, the um, expertise in uh, translation analysis scenario. And uh, you may see that uh, this map uh, would be good for a theoretical course. Yeah? And uh, it uses quite a different uh, bunch of shapes, uh, which doesn't matter, which uh, will be important only for the users. And uh, I hope uh, that if uh, the same uh, symbols I used, uh, students will quickly recognize uh, what uh, the um, connection is uh, between the symbols and uh, the theoretical information. So that's it. Uh, yeah, we talked about uh, the um, we talked about uh, the institutes. Uh, we this, we talked about uh, how people uh, continue their professional education in Ukraine, uh, what we do for this. Uh, and uh, finally, I presented very briefly uh, what we did at the Institute, which uh, ended uh, like uh, at such a difficult time. So please, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you're welcome. No, no, sorry, Marina, may I ask a question? Come on. Uh, was Maria Gracia also wants to ask a question, but she will be after you. Yeah, come on. Uh, uh, as usual, very, very interesting um, presentation, very interesting concept. 
But as usual with me, I have a question. Please. First of all, where the forms which you use for putting in them categories uh, are chosen not randomly, but maybe you have made some of the research. And the next question, because you demonstrate in different, uh, um, different schemes by the other teams, and uh, the question came naturally whether uh, the color, colors influence our millennials. So two questions about the form and the color. Because personally, yours, I, the, I see and I follow your logic. Some of shown by you, I was a little bit misled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a really good question. Huh? Because, yeah, so forms, so shapes, they really matter. Like, I don't know, maybe they don't matter. But uh, in my understanding and in the kids' understanding, like uh, an oval, it looks, it's like a person. Yeah? So you're around it. So then an arrow is, uh, uh, arrow, an arrow is, uh, an action because uh, we usually act this way here. Yeah. So then a rectangle, a rectangle is uh, a thing, maybe because it's like this, but that's it. Uh, there is, uh, and again, the shapes are the shapes that uh, the Word document and uh, the PowerPoint document uh, can offer. So we don't really use many shapes here. So they are the main shapes. Uh, the, the basic shapes. And as for the colors, um, I started with, uh, probably you heard about Zaitsev and Zaitsev, uh, he, there were the cubes, his cubes, uh, but also he has a theory on uh, the, uh, on uh, the sentence structure. And in his sentence structure, so everything uh, like this first part, they were like, uh, uh, the subject was red, uh, then the uh, verb was blue, and the rest parts of the English sentence were green. And uh, he said that it's important to get the subject and uh, the, like, the red and the blue part. And then you have an English sentence. And everything which is green is uh, just added to it. I learned about it so many, many, many years ago. And I thought that it was uh, like, there was something in it. And as soon as we started using it, uh, uh, it really worked because uh, uh, kids uh, sometimes, uh, they are tired of uh, these words. It's a subject, it's a verb. Uh, sometimes it's necessary to say red, blue, green red, blue, green. So, and uh, it's such, you know, it makes studying easier because uh, we are not only operating uh, with grammar terms. Uh, yeah? So we are shifting uh, their focus uh, to colors uh, and it's fun. Uh? Plus uh, you probably noticed uh, that today's uh, kids, uh, they are well, uh, visually educated, they, they have this visual literacy. I don't know, visual literacy probably, if there is literacy, oracy, and something like visual literacy. Yeah, so, but they have this visual literacy when they have the understanding of colors, when they can name many colors, and many of them will be working with colors because they will be designers, they will be working different projects. So we really pay attention to colors, but mostly like asking kids to recognize the colors so they learn more about colors because I believe that visual literacy is also a part of general education today. They need, they need to have this visual understanding of what is going on. Yeah, plus, plus art, plus uh, like, uh, I like art. So that's why kids do lots of art, which is also connected with colors. Maria Gracia, please, your question. No, uh, it, it wasn't a real question. I just wanted to compliment. You know, it, it was a big applause <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I really, you. you know, I was really impressed by your presentation. And it was uh, uh, 
uh, informative uh, and also uh, you know it's important uh, uh, for for us as a, a similar organization to compare you know the kind of uh, works and activities uh, that you do and it's for sure a great job uh, we i really appreciate how you uh, you know you organize activities uh, how you structure them we can see that there is a great job behind the in, and so I, I want to congratulate uh, with uh, the president and uh, the, the other two presenters, of course, uh, Lili and uh, Marina. So thank you so much. Thank there you. are a lot of questions. Marina, if you want to. <laughs> OK, to OK, Irina, please. Yeah. <laughs> Unmute yourself. They're asking me. No, 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 So, well, uh, Marina, dear Marina, uh -huh. on behalf of the teachers uh, uh, of our association of the teachers of the English language of uh, the city Dnipro, well, uh, Valentina Shvetka, well, let me uh, thank you a lot for your brilliant educational work for the teachers of our school for simple teachers of secondary schools well and your work inspires every time when you come to our school and try to fill us with your knowledge with your uh, magic i miss you so much yeah. maps mind maps and uh, meaningful maps so it inspires us really a lot thank you very much thank you thank you you know, before the war and before COVID, I used to come to Dnipro every year and uh, the association invited me and we had uh, wonderful sessions uh, and we are like relatives uh, because we know each other for four decades, uh, for so many years and every year we shared, but now, unfortunately, yeah. No, there will be time when Someday. it will be back. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, any more questions? Marina, there is a question. Uh, uh, do you think new teaching methods have been established after 2020 due to COVID pandemic? You know, uh, I think that in general, in general, we need to shift uh, to this new methods. Uh, with pandemic, it only worsened, the situation only worsened. Uh, but even before the pandemics, uh, you know, it's, uh, when we teach uh, young young learners, uh, uh, we usually ask them to use their fingers. We say it's a magic finger, and uh, with the magic finger, they trace uh, these arrows, and they trace, uh, and that's how they are able to uh, make sentences. Why? Because uh, they are using fingers all the time uh, with their phone, and uh, without using the finger they have uh, this very weak connection with the brain. And uh, using their fingers, uh, they connect uh, somehow this body to the brain. And uh, we started noticing it uh, like maybe five, six years before the pandemics. Uh, because uh, like not all, all of you teach kids uh, and uh, Mostly my research, like everything I'm doing is based on teaching kids and teenagers. But uh, uh, after we have tried uh, the same scheme with the TESOL Ukraine members, uh, we understood that it works perfectly with adults as well, because uh, they go back to the information, they remember better. We uh, always ask uh, this, simple questions uh, they, that connect categories, uh, that connect topics. Uh, and uh, that is how they are building this robust construction in their brains. Like uh, I had a session with Moldova just be, no, during the war, it was already the war. And uh, they were also like um, uh, the whole uh, bunch of participants, they agreed uh, with the idea that if the information is structured and we go back to it while we're going through the unit, 
it will leave a better uh, picture in the brain of our students uh, because otherwise uh, these are the disconnected pieces of information uh, and especially now when the students uh, don't really like when they don't process information well yeah, they really need this type of scaffolding. And I'm a really big proponent of the scaffolding because uh, it uh, helps in so many, in so many things, but uh, then uh, you can develop your language awareness uh, because it helps with word building as well. And you can do this uh, transformations. Uh, so, but everything is based on this very simple, uh, idea of uh, categorizing uh, and structuring information. Oh, I'm wild about it. So you need to stop me. Yeah. <laughs> Yule, come on. Uh, good evening, dear colleagues. Uh, today, uh, I really would like to say some words because I am a teacher at school. I really have um, um, I really meet uh, kids and uh, uh, teenagers every day. And my question is, uh, we use really great books uh, during our lessons, um, uh, express publishing books, especially on screen. Uh, I and my colleagues are very satisfied uh, uh, with them and um, but very often and uh, today you just expressed your opinions about um, technologies, gadgets, uh, different kind of gadgets during our lessons. So what is your opinion? Uh, what is better to use more books during the lessons uh, or to use more technologies or 50-50 or how do you think? You know, like for me, there are two problems. There are two big problems. Uh, first of all, uh, whether they are concentrated uh, on uh, what you are doing or not. You may use whatever you want, but if there is no concentration, no, it doesn't really happen. You may use all wonderful technologies uh, and uh, like uh, word walls uh, and lots and lots of things. Uh, but you need to understand that their brains are overwhelmed uh, with these kinds of uh, fun. They have this fun every time uh, they go to their phone. And, but the most difficult thing is uh, to concentrate them on what they are saying, not just randomly, yeah? And for this, uh, they need to get this information, to process it, and to, to say it. And how you do it depends upon your class and what you do. Uh, our students, like in my schools, we, of course, we have these maps on the screen, and kids talk using these maps. That's how they structure their thinking better. But again, I believe you can do it with your books as well. But just depends so, here. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I, don't, I don't like technology. You can see it uh, with how I operate. With Me it. too. Me yeah. too. I believe uh, I that like... especially with small kids, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, today I took a, a lot of photos of your tables that you shared. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for your answer. Yeah, you can contact me. This is my dream. I dream to have this uh, big net of Ukrainian teachers uh, who work the same way because it is very easy. It makes it much easier to work this way here. Yeah. But we're still developing. It's not that the whole system is like this. No, we're still in the process of developing. Thank you. My pleasure. So that's it, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maria, grazie, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, a, a lot of uh, positive feedback. Uh, and uh, can I say something? I completely agree with you. Methodology is important, but uh, sorry, uh, technology is important, but methodology is much more important. And I think uh, that uh, you, we as a teachers, uh, we can be agents of change 
we can affect uh, really, uh, you know, the process of learning of our students. Uh, we have to understand their needs and uh, depending on the situation and on the context, we can combine different uh, approaches, different situations and technology may help a lot, but uh, you know, it's a combination. So it's a, a powerful means of uh, technology, but it's not, uh, you know, the most important one in my opinion. <laughs> but it helps a lot because it's the what the, the new generation uh, understands. They are, you know, digital uh, natives, and that's why for them it's easier. But in this, uh, there could be a greater collaboration uh, between teachers and learners. And I think that this is very important. This is a key factor. So uh -huh. I totally agree with what you are doing and uh, you know, you are, you are doing very well. So congratulations for your Thank project. you so much. Yeah, it's about structuring their thinking. You know, like uh, you need to structure their thinking and uh, the more you do it, uh, the better. Yeah. Okay, Anya, are you asking a question or are you applauding? <laughs> Uh, actually, both, both. <laughs> both. Uh, reaching to ask a question. Well, this these are just my uh, thoughts aloud. Probably, I'm just sharing um, the advancement and the development of technologies. Actually, uh, forced uh, quite a lot of students to stop doing things uh, uh, physically uh, with their hands. And uh, if uh, previously. Uh, when we got them uh, in physical bricks and mortar classroom, right, so-called, uh, we uh, would make them uh, write something, do something, a case, uh, sometimes uh, stand up for warming up activities and quite a lot of other very, very useful things. Uh, the development of technologies, then uh, the appearance of uh, pandemics actually forced us uh, to be locked and chained to the computer and uh, deprive uh, the possibility of development of certain uh, skills connected with kinesthetics. And uh, what we face now is that, yes, uh, uh, students are now uh, majorly uh, technology oriented, they are technocrats, so called. They know more uh, about technologies than we do, and we have to catch up with them, right? Quite often. But mostly, what we see nowadays is the uh, how to say uh, uh, waving goodbye to things uh, that uh, um, have traditionally been a very useful tool for us, like writing something, right? doing something with hands, touching, when we would bring up, for example, the map, okay, let's come together and see what we have there. So we cannot do uh, something like that, right? Uh -huh. And so if, uh, for example, when I uh, used to uh, do seminars for my colleagues uh, at my university, I, I would say I would start my uh, workshops uh, say, saying that students can be divided into visuals, kinesthetics, uh then audios right this yeah, classical man, division nowadays uh, yes uh, nowadays nowadays what we see uh, the majority of students um can be categorized yeah. into uh visuals probably right Te uh, technocrats some of them uh, are still uh, still have their auditive uh, uh abilities okay but uh, kinesthetics, mm, how can we check it? No possibility, okay? So we need a think? classroom. We need a off an offline classroom, yes. yeah. especially yes. for working with younger kids, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this, is what, this is what I uh, also think. Uh, uh, there is one more thing. Uh, some, some, Somebody from school has said, it seems to me that it was white, that the development of hand is connected with the development of brain. Okay, so we can Absolutely. expect, Absolutely. We, can, we can expect some uh, serious, uh, serious consequences in the upcoming future, uh, in the possibilities of students, our students of conceptualizing, conceptualizing uh, certain things and have to 
uh, be aware of that and we have to adjust to the fact that uh, there comes the moment when our students cannot do certain things because there's been a long period of them not touching anything, not writing uh, uh, anything, uh, not doing things uh, that they used to do uh, when they were in, uh, in traditional classroom. Okay, and everything was fine. Yeah. Okay, just, and now just everything my, is not traditional in our life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, just my, just my thoughts, uh, thoughts uh, um, allowed, right? But together, individually, we can move stones. But together, we can move mountains. So when we brainstorm, we can find some more uh, useful ways of how to deal with these new challenges for teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, you want you want to ask a question yeah no I just wanted to say uh, I really liked uh, what Anna just said about the fact that together we can move mountains I thought that was absolutely wonderful so and I just wanted to also compliment you all on your uh, on the wonderful presentations that you gave this evening and uh, and your um your strength as a group absolutely amazing so thank you very much you really are an inspiration Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, bye. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy your weekend, and we'll meet on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Uh, kindly share the website link. Mm -hmm.